Hi, how's it going? Welcome back to the Elite Automation YouTube channel. On this channel, we discuss many different topics of automation, whether it be the practical skills on how to automate, ROI for automation, which this video is gonna be about, and as well, we are doing other technical tutorial videos, such as like PLC programming, robot programming, and also our podcast, The Manufacturing Come Up. So for today, I wanna to talk to you guys about ROI and how to get an ROI or how to calculate an ROI. Now today, if you're looking for specific like ROI calculation, we're not necessarily gonna get specifically into ROI calculation. This is gonna be more so on some of the things to think about when thinking about how to calculate an ROI because there's a lot of details that people don't think about as far as ROI, like unhidden or like hidden value adds that can be included into your ROI calculation, but there's actually things that subtract from your ROI that you may not necessarily think about, and we'll get into those today. So first thing we'll start off with is the positive ROIs, right? We always, we're always gonna start off with the positive things here. I'm gonna list off four different things that could potentially be a positive ROI. One is cost savings. Another is production throughput. Another is solving labor shortage issues. And a fourth one is quality. So that's just four to name off uh, some positive ROIs. Now, all four of these reasons are big enough of an ROI that they may be the reason you are looking to automate your operation or looking to procure a new piece of capital equipment. And depending on your company and depending on your struggles that you're dealing with within your company right now, these may be different for you. It's gonna be a com probably a combination of a few of these different things. And you know, obviously, like you have labor shortage issues, but if there's no ROI for the automation, then you still can't do it, right? Even if it sounds nice to solve your labor shortage issues. So first thing we're gonna dive into is the cost saving side of things. The number one thing that is going to be the cost saver is your employee associated costs. Now, when people think about employee associated costs, they generally are thinking about labor. Now, don't get me wrong, labor is a, a huge portion of the employee associated costs, but there are some other things that will definitely add up probably at least another 10% more to the labor cost. So you have your labor cost, and this is gonna be different for every company, so keep this in mind. Like if you pay your employees $15 an hour versus $35 an hour or $25 an hour, that's gonna obviously change your calculation. And also too, you might have, have a different range of pay scales. Maybe you have three people on a line that are making $15 an hour, and maybe you have two people that are at $25 an hour, and you have one person at $35 an hour. This calculation can be very dynamic. So one of the quickest, easiest things to do is to calculate how much an employee is costing your company. Now, one of the first numbers to go into that is their salary. The next thing to think about is insurances, any type of taxes that you're paying. A couple that are not necessarily thought of by a lot of companies are your injuries and costs of hiring a new employee. And when it comes to hiring a new employee, there's things like training and your other resources such as HR and, and management members that need to interview the candidate, and then the whole entire onboarding process. And injuries could be a very, very big thing. This is actually one of the reasons that we've automated for some customers. Maybe the process that they have is a very, very dangerous process. Maybe they're dealing with some type of sharp blades, or for one example, we've done some work for a steel company, and there are dross pots, which are basically molten vats of zinc, I believe, and there's a, basically a robot that's removing the excess material off of the top of this molten pot. And if somebody falls in there, it's lights out, game over. So something like that is, is somebody's life, right? Which is the utmost importance. And then you have potential costs that goes into that, right? There might also be lawsuits or severance pays or whatever goes into to those uh, type of scenarios. So for people who have very dangerous processes, Injuries is actually probably one of the top priorities versus just your cost savings, your production throughput, labor shortages, quality. Those are actually coming second to the injuries. The next thing I wanna bring you guys to is production throughput. So there's two versions of the production throughput, right? One, you could do more in less time. So if you're putting out 10 parts a day, now maybe you can put out 15 parts a day. Or for a lot of our customers, they're high production, so it's 15,000 parts versus 10,000 parts in a day. Next, you have your production throughputs. One, you could do more in less time, which means if you have changeovers and you have to switch from model to model, you're able to execute an order and then move on to the next thing in a shorter period of time. 
Now, that also adds into the fact that you can output more per day. And when you have total outputs that are higher, now you're able to sell more. You know, maybe when it comes to throughput, you have two things that you're trying to accomplish. One being you're not getting enough product out to your customer or you have a sales team that's looking to drive more sales for your company and you know that once you start landing these new orders, you're gonna have to produce more product. And this leads me into the next thing and has been a huge impact in our industry for the entire manufacturing industry for the past couple of years now, and that's labor shortages. You know, we're seeing labor shortages everywhere. All of our customers are buying automation because of labor shortages. We have projects that were slated to be two years out that are today because labor shortages are so bad. We had one customer that was down 50% employees, which resulted in them not being able to put out enough product for their customers, and they produced product to big names like Ford. And when you're producing product for a company like Ford, you can't deal with having labor shortages and not being able to output your product. And when it comes to labor shortages, there's so many creative ways to include automated systems or some new process. Uh, one of the big things that we've been doing is AMR technologies to help with labor shortages uh, because they're offering a new piece of technology that once was not available in our market to now be able to fill a gap with some of the logistical things within inside a manufacturing facility. And the fourth thing I have for you guys is quality. So depending on the type of system, you might be able to get better quality out of automation. Maybe it's a human doing hand assembly, or maybe it's a human doing hand inspection. And you can add things like vision systems to a piece of automation, or you can add other testing type of pieces of equipment. Sometimes this is a project in itself. People are buying capital procurements just for quality alone. They need to do some type of test to ensure that the product that they are outputting passes all inspections for their customer. And it may be leak detection units for automobile industry. It might be vision inspection to detect chips in paint or uh, injection molding where there's short shots. There's so many different use cases for things like vision systems and automation for correcting your quality issues. And depending on the companies that you're providing to, they may have huge penalties and can even cancel your contracts for quality issues. So that's a huge ROI in itself. The next topic I wanna bring you guys into is ROI neutrals, which are things that could be bad or could be good. So for one of the main things I have for this is maintenance. And think about this for any type of pro or con you may have with a piece of procurement. Maintenance, let's say you're going from being a human only operation and you're adding a piece of automated equipment. Your maintenance cost basically just went from being zero to whatever it's gonna cost you to maintain that system. Now generally over your first two years, five years, you may not really have any maintenance per se to be done on that particular system. And if you have a good systems integrator, they should support you for a couple years and may even have warranty contracts on their systems. In that case, you did actually gain quite a bit of cost when it comes to maintenance. But if you have a manufacturing line already or it's a conveyor system or some you know, special purpose assembly machine and maybe you're going to upgrade it to like a robotic cell assembly machine, your maintenance may actually reduce in cost. Maybe you had a mechanical unit that had a ton of moving parts and you know servos and cylinders and you upgrade to a newer servo automated system that is not gonna be needed to be maintained for a longer period of time. Maybe some greasings of some axes on robots or something along those lines, but those are just a general PM style maintenance and they're not like a critical maintenance that's gonna take your line down. So definitely think about that as well. So when it comes to maintenance, that is it just general PM maintenance cost or is it a cost of taking your uh, line down out of production? You gotta keep those things in mind, right? Cause your automated system can actually take your line out of production. Your old antiquated piece of manufacturing equipment can take your line 
out of production. So just keep those things in mind and, and also keep in mind too that you might want to think about doing a remote system, which is something that we offer as a company and we shove it on, onto our customers, right? We want our customers to take remote services, right? We want to install VPNs on their systems so that way we can remote in with our team. You give us your project code and we just log right in and make whatever edits need to happen. And if we can't make the edit online, at least we're more prepared for whenever a guy does get on site. But that can help with an ROI in keeping and make ensuring ensuring you don't have downtime. A potential negative ROI that you might run into is higher cost, more skilled employees. So if we take that same scenario of you have a human only production operation and you're gonna to go to a robotic application and you have a facility that doesn't have any robotic applications, that leap is gonna be a little bit harder for you than if you already have a bunch of robot systems around your shop or your manufacturing facility. So now you're looking at maybe hiring a robotics engineer or a PLC programmer or outsourcing that to you know, a company like ours to either do remote or on-site support. And you know those things can become very expensive. So that's something you definitely have to keep in mind. Now, like I said, if you have five robotic systems, 10 robotic systems already, you, know, you, you probably have some idea of ROI, but maybe you work for a company and you're the new guy on the team that's, that's having to figure out the ROI. So hopefully this video is helpful to you. And also if there's any particular thing that you'd like to know about ROI, ROI calculation, or anything automation related, put it down in the comments below so we can answer that and help you out in the next video.